I've got some exciting updates about projects that I've been working on lately. A couple weeks ago, I went down to Tampa, Florida, where my brother, country music singer Eli Mosley, had an opportunity to audition to be the opening act of a nationally recognized musical group that most likely everyone who's watching this video has heard of, but whose name I can't release at present. Uh, everything in time, hopefully. So what I went down to do is I recorded a, a concert that they put on at the Dallas Bowl in Tampa, Florida, which is kind of like a miniature version of Billy Bob's here in Fort Worth. So wonderful concert. In fact, I'll go ahead and play a little bit of footage from that concert so you can get a feel for what they did. Pick me up and shot me down Stepping out all over town Drove me back to drinking in this bar All right Y'all come on back up to the front of the stage if you would We got one more song we're gonna be out of your way This song right here It's been awesome for us this song is on over 30 radio stations across the southeast U.S. right now. Over 20,000 spins on Spotify in the first week it was released. You can hear this all over Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, Florida. It's called St. Augustine. We found love splashing water on the coast. Can't forget that smile when your small town toes touch the sun. You took my hand. Keep that going, man. I found redemption breathing in that salty air. Standing there with you, those waves washed away my cares and sins. Was you with me An ancient city Alive with memories Your sapphire summer dress Chance of rain and getting wet I miss a feeling Love wide open Watercolored sky Painted for you and me Fading off your lips Standing there with you And hanging on every kiss I give was my last Oh, we couldn't last We couldn't last And couldn't last in the matrix City alive with the memories It's a fine summer dress Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Y'all want to hear one more? 
By the way, while I was in Florida, I had the opportunity to go fishing out in Tampa Bay, and I caught my very first tarpon. Now, granted, it was a baby tarpon compared to the size that these things can get. It was probably 20 pounds in that ballpark, but it was a lot of fun, especially for somebody who usually spends most of his time in the boat unwrapping the fishing line from the end of the fishing rod and trying to figure out how in the world to put bait back on the hook, things of that nature. So it was somewhat ironic that I was able to haul this in, but at least I have the picture and can say that I was, for a brief period of time in my past life, an outdoorsman. Okay, the next story that, um, that I've worked on is a video that I produced this morning for the Community Food Bank. And we have a wonderful supporter of the Community Food Bank, Dr. Linda Mubarak, who has written a number of books, including this one, her latest work entitled Maxine's New Job. So what I did is we wanted to put a little more of a spotlight on Dr. Mubarak and her contributions to the food bank. So I invited her to come into the food bank when I was going to be there sometime and simply had her read through a few pages of her new story and recorded her uh, wonderful voice of narration as she worked through the story. So ended up scanning pictures from the book itself, uh, creating a background photo to kind of um, make um, each photo wider so it fit the video format and uh, put together the video and then have, uh, I've got a little interview of Dr. Mubarak at the end telling why she wrote the book and really it was to encourage those with dyslexia um, to just keep pushing forward that they can in fact uh, overcome that in life. So that was cool. That video has now been released. It's on the front page of the Community Food Bank right now. Another project that I'm working on is to help the Community Food Bank, which I do social media and graphics and basically help them tell the story, is converted their entire front page of the website, which I also designed, over to the colors and the design of the North Texas Giving Day, which comes up on Thursday of this week. I believe this is the fourth or fifth annual Giving Day, and it's the largest, it's the most important day for most organizations here in North Texas uh, as they raise a significant portion of their funds for the year on this particular day. So, redesigned the page, put a, a graphic on the top that people can click on and go directly to the, the place to donate to the Community Food Bank here in Fort Worth. So that was another fun project. Um, also this morning, I edited headshots of the church that I attend each month, usually at the beginning of the month, but this year it happened probably because of Labor Day, uh, towards the middle of the month. I take the headshots for all the new members who are joining the church. So we probably had 20, somewhere in that ballpark. I set up in a hallway that goes over a road and um, it's got good light coming in from both sides and then use a, a simple lighting uh, soft box to provide directional light on the front and a long lens to, to blur the background. So it's fun because I get to meet all the new people who are joining the church. Now here's something cool. I've got a postcard from Nathan's Lapathon. I had mentioned this organization and this event in my previous episode and I'll put a picture of, of what I've got here up on the screen and these are all photos except for the one of Nathan who the event celebrates that I took back in I don't know sometime this summer I forget but fun event um, really enjoyed doing photos I'm also looking forward to transitioning to video so I can still pull off photos like what I did here but with the video equipment that I now have I really want to start rolling a lot more video at the events that I cover uh, it's one of those deals that, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, granted, but video, man, it's like a million because you get the people's voice. You, you really get a much better feel for what's going on at the event. You, you can gauge the excitement and, and the enthusiasm and, and really feel the passion in a way that a photo just simply can't convey. It, it's just so static. Not to say anything against photography because I do make money off of that and love photography, but um, video is just so much richer. So I'm looking to expand my video offerings in addition to photography. Okay, here's something that's kind of cool. 
I say kind of because I haven't opened it yet, but I registered with Miller's Photo Lab as a professional photographer. One of the things you can do when you have a tax ID number and the like is to sign up with professional vendors who supply professional uh, prints, canvases, all types of products, including fine art albums. And Miller's Photo Lab, once I signed up for them, they asked me to send in four images that were formatted in the 8x10 format, 8x10 size, and they produced prints based on that. So this is my first look. This, by the way, I think I placed this order on a Friday afternoon. It was here in my box in Fort Worth on Saturday, so very fast. Okay, we have got... A printing slip, an order slip here that says it's free and they're providing me color samples. Now there are a number of really good companies out there and, and most have positive reviews. I'm really looking to find one that I just stick with. I know their ordering system, I know their product line well and uh, can send that. So this is a packing slip for new customer materials and then a little sample of something. I think sample prints showing off different paper size. And then inside of here, we've got a, an invoice here that says that they're sending me promotional products for free, more or less. So let me open up this envelope, pull out what's inside. We've got all types of fun stuff here. We've got the 2018 product catalog. Just going to be cool to look at. We have got more paper samples. Gotta love the crinkly paper. And that's what's in there. Now, these are the prints that I had done. So, looks like this. Comes in a little cellophane envelope here. And on the very top it says, free templates. Place your first order and within 24 hours of your order, your order being shipped, you will receive an email and download a link to free templates for, for some of our most popular products. Very helpful if you're doing albums in particular, especially page layouts, and I've done those for weddings in the past. So another card about now what? Um, what's the next step, basically? So what we've got here are four different photos. And let me just show you what I have. You're not gonna be able to see the difference on, on video. But these are photos. One of them is color corrected and one of them is not. And as I look at this here, I don't see much of a difference at all, which is fine by me because I um, submitted it the way that I wanted it to be anyway. Here's the same person. This is uh, downtown Indianapolis, by the way with the state house behind it. Uh, this one I took a little more artistic license in turning the sky from blue over to orange just to, I don't know, just for the fun of it. So this was a contestant, by the way, for uh, Miss Indiana, also uh, Miss USA. In fact, all four of these photos, I, I just did the entire series um, with her. The next one. And really, I don't see any difference in these colors. These are just about exactly the same. And then finally, we've got this one here. Again, looks the same to me. But it's got the Miller's promotional material on the outside. This one says no color correction. This one says it comes with color and, and density corrections. Um, I don't see any difference at all, which uh, to me is a good thing because I uh, submitted it, I think, the way it should have been done. Very impressive looking photos, uh, printed on fairly simple, basic photographic paper. I love seeing prints that are on metallic uh, surfaces. The colors pop in a way that paper just, just can't make happen. Um, so I'm looking to provide a lot of those products. It's interesting, I shot this, this wonderful wedding in 
in the Midwest, um, 2009, I think. It's been a little while. Haven't really done weddings since I moved to Fort Worth. And the photos were fine. The photos were wonderful. But when I ordered this custom album that uh, was actually handcrafted in Italy, 13 inches tall, I think it was 9 inches wide. So when you open it up, it's 13 by 18. It's a big, heavy, chunky book. But when I saw my photos presented in a format on this wonderful paper, I don't think it was metallic, but it may have had a metallic undertone to it. The colors popped. Those images came alive. And to see the size of the images, you know, especially as the book was spread open, it just looked glorious. Now, it was done at a nice church somewhere in Indiana, and the photos were okay. It wasn't shooting like uh, in Venice, you know, along the waterway with the pigeons and the great cathedral domes and all that. That's a little bit difficult to replicate uh, here in the States at times. But nonetheless, the album just made that, that, that whole event come to life. So uh, I, I'm looking to upgrade my wedding photography to produce some really high-end, beautifully formatted um, artistic art albums. Um, artistic art. It, it's so artistic that it's art artistic. So looking forward to getting that done and getting the ball rolling on that pretty soon. So that's all I've got here in terms of uh, the business side under the um, what's going on section. One more thing I wanted to share is that in the fall of 2013, I started something called the Fort Worth Portrait Project. And the project has morphed a bit over the years, although it's been inactive really in about the last 12 months. The original goal was to take pictures of people on the street in Fort Worth and to help tell their story. But I found it really difficult to find enough people just out and about in public places to walk up to and to, to interview. Um, Basically, all of Sundance Square, that whole area, um, security will chase you out of there if you look like you're doing anything uh, professionally related. So that would be one place where it would be easier to find people. Um, otherwise, you're down at the water gardens. And at the water gardens, you're finding people who often aren't even from Fort Worth. They're visiting from Milwaukee. They're here at a, a technology conference or, or something like that. So not really the best venue to, to get in touch with the people of Fort Worth either. So I transitioned in the project to telling more of, of the story of Fort Worth in general, events, places, uh, things of that nature, and then got to the place where I just didn't know what to do with it. So it's been sitting dormant for about a year. Well, anyway, I, I'm reading through um, Robert Caro's excellent biographical series on LBJ. And I supplement that by going to YouTube and looking up all these videos and watching them. And was fascinated last night by some of the still images that I saw of one of LBJ's tours through the Appalachian regions as he was launching his War on Poverty. And I was struck by the power of these still images to capture the scene as it was on that given day. So... I think I'm going to recommit myself to taking pictures of people here in Fort Worth. But here's the deal. Instead of walking up and interviewing the person, maybe even on video, what I'm going to do is just take candid shots. That's very different from what I shared earlier in this very same video about rolling video because it captures so much more of the context. It gives voice to that person. This is going the opposite direction. This is simply taking candid shots that allow the viewer, really, to read in the, in the meaning into that scene. Um, so I'll probably grab my camera, head downtown, head to other parts of the city, and uh, use my longer lens, most likely, maybe sometimes my shorter lens if I get adventurous enough, and just see what I'm able to create. So you can follow that on the Facebook page of the Fort Worth Portrait Project. It does have a website. I don't know that I'll continue to maintain that uh, in the future, but at least I'll do it on, on Facebook and, and maybe on Instagram as well. We'll see.